Oral Administration of Insulin, presented by Aslam Ashraf, Abdullah Sham, Arwa Ashraf, Reem Ahmed, Shirin Fauzi, and Asma Nabil. This study has been conducted under the supervision of Dr. Gina El Fiqi. The story began with taking one oral insulin tablet. Oh, that was a really long way till I reached the stomach. Hello, insulin. I see you come oral this time. Hello, baby peptide. Oh no no, trypsin, alpha chemotrypsin again? Oh no, and stomach pH will also destroy me. Don't worry, baby peptide. We will just destroy you. Insulin is a hormone secreted by beta cells of islets of longer hands of the pancreas. When supply of insulin is inadequate, diabetes mellitus occurs. The person with diabetes mellitus has to be supplemented with insulin obtained from other sources. Insulin is necessary for normal carbohydrate, protein, and fat metabolism. Insulin secreted allows the glucose to be absorbed by the cells all over the body. Oral insulin mimics the natural insulin release from the pancreas. Other routes of administration result in peripheral hyperinsulinemia, which predisposes to hypoglycemia. The burden of daily injections, physiological stress, pain, cost, risks, infections, inability to handle insulin, all leads to local hypertrophy and injection site problems. The challenges facing oral insulin are enzymatic degradation of insulin, acidic degradation in the stomach, first hepatic metabolism, and poor transportation of insulin across membranes. The requirements to prepare oral insulin includes delivery system should protect insulin from enzymatic degradation, the system should increase insulin permeability within the intestinal membrane, the successful oral delivery of insulin involves overcoming the barrier of enzymatic degradation. And finally, pharmaceutical strategies have been proposed to maximize oral insulin bioavailability in insulin delivery systems. Methodology. We can solve this problem by adding permeation enhancers. The absorption of insulin through the GIT can be increased by the use of permeation enhancers, for example, bile salts, fatty acids, and biomolecules such as chitosan. Permeation enhancers increases the absorption of the oral insulin in the GIT by disruption of the cell membrane, tight junction modulation with tight junction agonists, increasing the paracellular and transcellular transport, changing membrane fluidity, and decreasing mucus viscosity. Number two, adding enzyme inhibitors. Using enzyme inhibitors will slow the rate of insulin degradation and provides a viable means to circumvent the enzymatic barrier to the delivery of peptide and protein drugs. This problem will be solved by using pH-sensitive systems to prevent release of insulin within the stomach, but rather should carry it safely to the higher pH region of the intestine in order to minimize the acidic degradation of insulin. Number 3. Mucoadhesive Polymeric Systems the term mucoadhesion refers to the adhesion between polymeric carriers and the mucosa and is exhibited by certain polymers which become adhesive upon hydration. The goals of mucoadhesive DDS are to extend the residence time at the site of drug absorption, to intensify contact with the mucus to increase drug concentration gradient and ensure immediate absorption. Thiolated polymers are mucoadhesive-based polymers with thiol-bearing side chains, which is a promising alternative in the arena of non-invasive peptide delivery. Number four, using polymeric hydrogels drug delivery system. Using pH-sensitive methacrylic acid-based polymeric hydrogels, the pH-sensitive graft copolymers of the polymethacrylic acid and the polyethylene glycol exhibit pH-sensitive swelling. In the acidic environment of the stomach, such hydrogels are in a complex state in which the insulin cannot readily diffuse through the membrane barrier due to its small size. As the polymer passes through the stomach into the intestine, the pH increases above the transition pH of the hydrogel and a complex is immediately dissociated. The network pore size rapidly increases leading to the release of the insulin. Also, when using polymeric hydrogels, it provides several attractive features, including a prolonged residence time, reduced enzymatic activity, increased tissue responsiveness to absorption enhancer, and natural absorption characteristics. We expect that we can possibly form oral insulin tablets with increased bioavailability and more efficient treatment and patient compliance. However, extensive clinical trials and monitoring is required for complete independence of insulin as an invasive route. In conclusion, 
Oral delivery of proteins and peptides is an efficient way to replace the invasive route. Forming oral biomolecules is challenging due to their high molecular weight, chemical or enzymatic degradation, and impermeability through intestinal mucosa. This concludes the ability to form clinically therapeutic bioavailable oral insulin that overcomes GIT interference and inherits the physiochemical properties of the insulin molecule. The development of oral insulin delivery carriers to improve oral insulin therapy is a very promising method. However, long-term clinical applications are still required. What do you think about my hydrogel drug delivery system? Oh no, you ruined my mission. We will come back for you, baby peptide. End of the story.